Hey everybody, it's me and Coco Bananas. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to do chapters 6 and 7 together. They're both on the same subject. Chapter 6, polynomials as functions. Chapter 7, graphing and the quadratic formula. All these ideas go together. I think of them as wedded together. I mean, they're welded to each other. You can't break it up. So let's play around with these ideas. So chapter 6 and chapter 7, what I'd like you to work on for this week so it's the end of March, beginning of April. The first 30 problems in chapters 6 and 7 chapter tests. So we're cutting right to what you care about. The next thing will be a test. I'm not going to do little quizzes. The next thing is going to be a test on chapters 6 and 7 together. Let's learn them together because the ideas go together. And it's not that many ideas, but they're, it's like having these four ideas and these three ideas, and they fit together like this. So if you can get them together like that, that's the way to learn it. All right, so it starts with just the arithmetic operations. Subtraction and addition is by like terms. So if you go up here, I did on this problem what I do on any long math problem that has like terms. I actually mark them. If you look at this little single line here and this little single line there, I've got two terms that are both a, b squared. It isn't the three in front that makes them alike. It's the a, b squareds. And then I put some squiggles, double squiggles, under the negative 6a squared b and the positive 7a squared b. So 3 minus 3 actually cancels to 0. And that's an equal sign here. And the uh, uh, negative 6a squared b plus 7a squared b leaves 1a squared b. So we have 1a squared b. The a, b squareds are gone. And this 4ab, nobody messes with it, but it still lives. So you get that, that answer. So this much longer thing simplifies to that. And that's how you do an addition and subtraction problem. It's by like terms. These two things are the same. So if I took a equals 10 and b equals 7 and put it in up here, I'd get, that would be a long calculation. I'd get a number. I'd get the same number if I put those two values in for a and b here and here. Those two, those two expressions are logically equivalent. Now multiplication is the one that, oh my god, my calculus students have trouble with it. Oh, you got to understand, it's the distributive law. It's not the distributive option. It's not, well, sometimes you remember what to multiply and sometimes you don't. You got to have it down. You got to have it down solid. So what happens here is I got to do the 3x times both of these, times the 2x and the plus 5. I got to do the negative 7 times the 2x and the plus 5. So the 3x times 2x, 6x squared. The 3x times the 5, 15x. The negative 7 times the 2x, negative 14x. And the negative 7 times the 5, negative 35. You got to do it. You got to go, get it organized and get all those pieces and keep track. These two are like terms. They combine to be just 1x. So there's my single answer there. Now, here's what you're going to do when you go to chapter 7. You're going to fire up your calculator and you're going to graph. These two things, let me see if I can get this to, to appear. Let's see. There we go. So if you notice, those are my two uh, things that I just wrote on the board. I'm going to hit graph. Now watch. There's the one graph happening. And here's the second graph happening. It literally overwrites the first graph. Oh, that means they're the same. That means I did it right. I expect you guys to use your calculator to check things on tests and to do problems on tests because you can tell when you're doing it right. Your calculator confirms. So please do that sort of thing. That would be so cool. I really, I'm astounded when I get students that don't check. It's just, I don't understand. So that's a way to check that you've actually multiplied out something. And then also in chapter six, they'll give you six X squared plus X minus 35 and ask for the 3x minus 7 times 2x plus 5 back, which we'll work on in another video. And again, you can check your factoring by graphing the two things. Yes, it's a lot of typing, but you know, you're smart. You can do that. All right, now, that's addition, subtraction, multiplication. All that's left is division. We're going to do a division problem for you. So we actually have one way of doing division that works all the time polynomial long division, and we're going to do one using polynomial long division, and then I'll show you a shortcut maybe on another video because this one's going kind of long. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do the polynomial x cubed 
minus, or sorry, plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12, and it's divided by, I'm going to divide it by x minus 2. You want to get down? Are you done? Okay, she's done. And now, here's what happens. What do I multiply x by to kill the x cubed? I multiply by x squared. So I write x squared up here. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 2 is negative 2x. And I subtract. That's the big idea. That's how it goes. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. That's why I did this move, was to bump off the x cubed. You'd be a good weasel over there. And then I have 3x squared plus 2x squared. That's a 5x squared. Now, how do I cancel off a 5x squared? Well, I've got an x, so i got to match it with a plus 5x. Because remember, I'm going to subtract. So I just multiply by 5x. So I get a 5x squared. That's from 5x times x. And I have minus 10x. Let me bring down this minus 4x. And remember, I'm subtracting. So I have negative 4x plus 10. So that's a 6x minus 12. And a beautiful thing happens. If I just multiply by 6, I get 6x. Is that on the screen? It is. 6x minus 6 times 2 is minus 12. I have an exact match. These guys subtract, and I get 0. Perfect. So that means that this polynomial here is equal to x minus 2 times x squared plus 5x plus 6. And I'm going to do what I just did on the last one. I entered these in my calculator. I have the full polynomial and the factored one. I've got these two. I've got this polynomial and that polynomial. i got them both on my calculator. I'm going to just show them to you for a second. There they are. And now I'm going to hit graph. Now watch. All right, there's the first one. And here comes the second one. Completely overwriting it. Those two polynomials are the same. So you can always check when you're doing these things. Yes, it's extra typing. Oh, my God. But would you do a minute of extra typing if it meant knowing you got it right and you don't have to look at it again? I would. I would. You know, if you could if you could take an extra minute and do something that verified that you got the thing right on a graded piece of work, would you not do that in any class? Well, do it in mine. Okay, you guys, get to work.